welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to IPFW GLVC Great Lakes Valley Conference basketball action. Charles Washington along with David Skelton bringing you the action as the IPFW Mastodon set to battle the St. Joseph Pumas out of St. Joseph's, Indiana. Should be a battle tonight, Charlie. I think the Mastodons are looking for a little revenge here tonight after a couple of weeks ago making a snowy, cold trip over to Rensselaer, Indiana. Not being treated too well, but uh, coming off with a pretty good effort, but yet they lost the ball game over there. And this is also a, a battle for respectability. Both teams right there in the middle to lower half of the uh, Great Lakes Valley Conference um, standings. And this game should set the tone for the Dons in terms of the end of the season, setting the tone going into uh, next season. Uh, we, I guess we've lost any hopes of any postseason tournament bids, but um, respectability and a good positive tone going into next season is very important. Yeah, exactly, because there's an awful lot of young ball players on the uh, IPFW basketball team this year, and they won Thursday night. They've got a chance for two in a row here tonight, and they could win uh, four or five out of these last six ball games, which would really get them uh, on a giant step toward next year. That's right. And if there's any consolation, uh, we've lost uh, some pretty tough games to some really good basketball teams. Real tough, yeah. The two conference leaders, Kentucky Weston and Southern Indiana, were in here a couple of weeks ago. And uh, IPFW played both clubs very, very well. In fact, had an opportunity to, uh, to win both ball games late in the game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, three teams, three out of the 11 teams in the conference uh, ranked in, in the top 11 in the nation. Um, fourth, seventh, and uh, 11th, I believe. Uh, Wesleyan being fourth, I think Southern Indiana being seventh. And uh, Northern Kentucky, Kentucky 11. 11. Yeah. yeah, they're really burning up the league, too. And IPFW has a victory over one of them. And IPFW wins the tip. TJ Hollowell brings the ball up. Steve Sanders, Dane Adams, Southside graduate Ryan Bond. Turnover there on the right side of the court. IPFW played a real solid game Thursday night. They need to come out and get started well here right off the bat tonight. Number 44, Doug Kelly. Gets the first points on the board tonight, Charlie. Not a good omen. Good pass by Bond. And that should be a good pass. Great pass. Good shot. Opportunity for three. Dane Adams steps to the line. It's a great post-to-post -post pass that time. Again, Southside graduate Ryan Bond, former Indiana All-Stater. Adams misses the back end of that three-point play. Number 13 for the Puma. Kevin Denson. Yeah, he went high for that rebound. 2-2 tie. Shot falls short. Rebound Adams to Hollowell. Good to see T.J. Hollowell back in uh, the play here. Although he couldn't quite get stopped, drug that back foot, but he was out for a couple of months with that stress fracture. And he was playing very well um, at the time of that injury. Yes, he was. Very unfortunate to see that happen. But he's a freshman. He's a young guy. He'll heal fast and get back at it. <laughs> Stolen by Bond. Young trying to get the ball that time to Bailey. Both teams with a couple of early turnovers. Good move. Steve Sanders in the lane. Two in the paint. Steve is a proverbial scorer. That's what he does best. And he's got all kinds of moves. And can shoot the three for a big guy. Good inside move that time by Denson. Denson coming into the game. Uh, Averaging about 14 points a ball game. And that should give the Dons an advantage because they're without their leading scorer. 20 points a game they're without tonight. That was a perfect lead pass. 
Kevin Denson took it in stride and went up and jammed that ball through. Great pass that time, like Young to right. Right in stride. And as Ryan Bowen does so often, he kind of squirms and scoots and shoots and it goes in. Great move that time. No wonder he's an Indiana All-Stater of a couple years ago from Southside. Transferred from Vincennes University. IPFW is having a heck of a time getting on the boards. Ryan Bond finally squeezes it, although he's two-team. Now he comes out. Neither Quickly. of these teams, Dave, are uh, particularly very good rebounders. Hollowell. All right. A three. A three for TJ. As I was saying, neither team are uh, very uh, good rebounders, both coming in averaging about 32 or so rebounds uh, per game, and those are kind of low stats for the Great Lakes Valley Conference. Yeah, and they're neither one uh, loaded with big, bulky, husky guys that play the inside. Nice defense that time. Steve Sanders wouldn't let him around. Dane Adams shut off the, the baseline, and uh, St. Joe got the happy feet. That's right, and Perkins kind of committed to one of those sins that coaches tell the players never do. Never leave your feet, especially down there on the baseline. It had an extra defender. It was a double team, but actually the baseline serving as a third defender. Yeah, he had nowhere to go. Whirling to Sanders. Hollowell Denson not giving him that three this time. Whirling at the top. What do we have here? A hold? Yes, we do. Number 30, maybe? 20. 20. Walter Perkins. Yes. Don't say 30. That's Harry Perry. Those 20 yes, points right. that aren't supposed to be here. And he better not show up at <laughs> halftime either. Sanders shooting the air ball that time. That time, Dean Adams cut off the baseline, and uh, Perkins kind of circled back down the lane. That's right. He tried the baseline and nothing doing, and, but he didn't give up on it and just turned and rolled right to the middle in a nice finger roll. Had to finish the play on offense as well as defense that time as the Don saw. That's right. Sanders tries the three again. There you and go. And that'll be three that's good. And uh, what do they got? Whirling. Here? I think we had Jason Whirling on a push underneath the basket. And Ryan Bond at number 33 with a little extracurricular activity, Rod Bailey. So we had a lot of extra things going on. But nonetheless, the three is good by Steve Sanders. That's the main thing. Yeah. And that puts the Dons up 12 to 8 with 15 24 left to go in the ball game. Jeff Jackson in the IPFW lineup during that dead ball. He has replaced Jason Worling. Jackson out of Elkhart replacing the New Haven standout. Former New Haven standout, Jason Worling. Bailey to Denson. Perkins tries the lane. Excuse me, we have an update, so to speak. Jason Whirling apparently went to Woodland, not a New Haven. I think you would find, though, Charlie, his mailing address would be New Haven. New Haven native. There you go, there you go. <laughs> Woodland standout, Woodland High School standout, New Haven native. Russ Marsnick in the IPFW lineup also here in that last break in the action. He replaces T.J. Hollowell, so the two guards staying fresh for IPFW. That's a good, um, a good substitution combination because Jackson and um, especially Marsnick have started quite a few basketball yeah. games here, particularly that Marsnick. That's twice tonight IPFW has tried to enter the post from the deep uh, left corner and puts the ball too far out of reach. Ryan Bond hasn't been able to go get it. Um, that time uh, Jackson should have dribbled down maybe a couple steps yeah. more and they got a better angle. Sure, sure. He had plenty of room to go. He was not pressured. 
Number 50 in the basketball game. Ryan Davis. And Denson passes the ball to Davis. Bond guarding him. Denson looks at three. Jackson up, up high. So far, uh, St. Joe has, has not seemed to be very anxious to put up a three-point shot. Well, almost there, Davis. They like to pound it down inside. Almost down, wouldn't fall for Bailey. That's one of those you don't know how it didn't go in. <laughs> Sanders to Bond. Takes a look inside, Marsnick. Sets it up to Jackson in the corner. Back out top. Marcinix handles the ball. Bond. He can hit that. Oops, a little, little shy. He kind of aimed shot. that shot. Yeah. He kind of aimed it that time instead of shooting the ball. That happens sometimes when you're that open. He's not used to being so wide open. You're right. The Pumas working the glass that time. Fortunately, they haven't been able to get the shots to fall. And at the outset of the game, Dave, I think you can see why, actually, in some instances, why both teams struggle a little bit. Neither yeah. team is real smooth right now, and hopefully the Dons uh, will get a little smooth before the Pumas did. That's right. Yeah, they both uh, come at you with a pretty tough defense and have a little trouble getting the offense going. First shot up and good by number 20, Walter Perkins. Again, he came in, coming into the game tonight averaging right at 14 points a ball game. Denson. I, IPFW just wasn't quite ready for that rebound that time. And Jason Burkhart went around the uh, pick rather than through it. Cost him two. That's right, that'll cost you that extra split second as we have a timeout. Timeout by the Dons with 13.05 left in the ball game. The College Cable Access Program Guide provides information about our program, including IPFW Sports Telecasts. To receive your free Channel 6 Program Guide, send your name, address, and zip code to Channel 6 at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, with a zip code of 46805. Or call us at 481-6000. 13.05 left. Uh, Don's up by a mere free throw, 12 to 11. As we see uh, Coach Andy Piazza talking to his troops, giving them instructions. Don't think he particularly liked that last play. Yeah, kind of gave up uh, garbage, too. Been a fairly fast-paced game so far, Charlie, and so it, uh, it'll see how uh, fatigue sets in. Yeah, a quick, a quick seven minutes. I don't think fatigue should set in, particularly for the Dons, because they typically play nine yeah. players yeah. out very easily. And they play up and down all the time. We see Casey Runyon into the lineup. He's about to inbound the ball for the Dons. We set the lineup for the Dons. We have Marcinick, Number 54, Jason Burkhardt. Steve Sanders, 42, Casey Runyon with the ball now. And Jeff Jackson. Sanders is the only starter in the lineup right now for IPFW. And we see an illegal pick called against Jeff Jackson. And that happens sometimes. The Dons that time were working that flex offense, which is uh, pretty difficult to teach and probably even harder to learn. Yeah. And sometimes with all the cuts that happen, uh, you're very apt to be moving on the screen sometimes. For the first time tonight, they put on full court pressure. Didn't seem to phase the Pumas too much. Not a lot. Another miss by Bailey, but the rebound falls to number 35. Well, they're Jennifer. getting a hand on the ball. They got to squeeze it. Right now, they're just getting out muscled in close to the basket. Somebody's got to do something about that. I think uh, not only is it being out muscled, they're being out quick to yeah, uh, a lot of yeah. those loose balls and particularly the rebounds. Just not alert. JV Showalter in for Casey Runyon and Ryan Glidden in for Steve Sanders. Steve Sanders getting his first rest of the evening. 
Glidden normally a starter. Well, it's kind of hard to say who's normally a starter in Coach Piazza's lineup, but Glidden has started quite a few games. A Division I uh, transfer from uh, St. Bonaventure University. One of the leading scorers for the Dons for the season. But he kind of hits those lulls, Charlie, where uh, things just don't go quite so well for him, and he doesn't work real hard to get out of them. Yeah, it's a 40-minute game, and not to mention Monday through Friday in practice. Absolutely. Another bad entry pass down the post for the Dons. The same pass a few moments ago that Jeff Jackson made. On Thursday night, one of the things that really helped the Dons was that they were able to keep those turnovers down. And I tell you what, Dave, that's the key. Um, that's the key to basketball, whether you're talking lunchtime or the NBA. If you can that's control right. the turnovers, at least get a shot. That's right. Get an opportunity. Because, at, hey, at best you have a chance for a rebound. When you turn it over, you get nothing. And there's a turnover where uh, the Pumas tried to push it down too, too tightly inside. Couldn't control the ball. They have pretty good height in that lineup right now. Charlie, they've got number yeah. 35, Chad Peterson, 6'9", Patterson, rather, and they've got number 33, Rod Bailey, 6'9". Nice move, but Russ Marcinick, he couldn't get that shot to fall. Good move, knifing through the lane that time. St. Joe is on a six to nothing run here. You need it's to bring that to us. A, a quiet six to nothing yeah, run. Yeah, it has been. <laughs> Good defense that time by Jackson. I think uh, Perkins is down hurt, and we'll get a timeout as soon as possessions change. Jackson. And the referee. Yeah, I think he got a good sprained ankle. He came down on the side of somebody's foot, maybe. Oh, and that hurts. When you roll that ankle over, yeah. that one hurts. And they can ill afford to lose uh, Perkins. He's 14 points out of the lineup. And plus, Perry sitting at home, probably at uh, Rensselaer, Indiana, taking 20 points out. Now you're taking 35 points out of your lineup. Yeah, yeah, that's a chunk. Do you suppose Harry Perry is picking up our telecast tonight, Charlie? <laughs> Rensselaer might be a little bit out of uh, range. Maybe he has a satellite. Marcinic with the near steal pass. He called a kick that time. Yeah, while well, the ball stayed in play, fortunately for IPFW, because they were going to have a wide open layup, although he lost, he blew it, but I, he may have been. I think it was fouled. Yeah, yeah, he was fouled if the play had been good. So it was actually a break for the Dons. Rand Davis, 244 with a three pointer. 19 foot shot, 18 and a half feet. Yes. And the Dons will take possession with 10-14 left here in the first half of the basketball game. With the Dons down by a deuce, 14-12. And they've been stuck on that 12-point block for a long while, Dave. And they need some crispness out of this offense here. Something smooth to happen and basket to go in wouldn't hurt a thing, would it? Not a thing at all. Glitton. Jackson back out to Glitton. That could do it right there. Ryan Glitton coming in, averaging close to 13 points. The Dons have three players right around 12 points. Good, Good pressure defense. defense that time, causing a turnover. And I think that's exactly what the Dons need. Whenever you're playing 10 players, there's no need to save anything. Uh, no. Keep the pace, keep it going, keep the trap going, and every now and then change that pace just to uh, throw the other team off a little bit. J.B. Showalter being replaced by Ryan Bond. J.B. came in and did a pretty respectable job. He kind of held his own on the boards in there a little better and stacked up the defense. 
That's what you want to come out a plus on the positive side. Good baseline move that time by Jeff Jackson. Yeah, Jeff surprised everybody, including his own teammates, that he uh, went ahead and took the baseline. Good pass that time. That time, Jackson. Uh, Jackson has to watch it, or any player has to watch that. Um, you can't show up the referee. If you show up the referee, they will give you a technical, and they will be on your case for the rest of the basketball game. I think after he pounded the floor four times, if he'd have said anything, even like, good job, ref, why well, he'd have got tacked with one. Jason Whirling back in the lineup. I think a pretty good move by Coach Piazza to get Jackson out of the basketball yeah. game. I let the referee cool down and forget about that play, yeah. and then Jeff can come back in because he uh, was playing very well. Number 44, Doug Kelly at the line, splits two free throws. That time, Ryan Davis for St. Joe was caught between a rock and a hard place. I'm not sure about that call, but I'm I'm not wearing the official stripe, so I, I well, don't know. I, I guess they say the ball had been in possession in front court. And I guess that's what I question, uh, the true possession. Yeah. Looked like a loose ball, simple loose ball to me. Ooh. Jason, Got away with one that time. Yeah, huh? and Jason Whirling should have kept going right to the basket. He'd have gotten a bounce pass in there, and he'd have been free. Another three by Ryan Wooden. That's a good skip pass that time. Great skip pass that time by yeah. Whirling. Pressure defense that time by the Dons, and they got about a half a step behind, and thus they had to draw a foul. They had Ryan Davis in a good spot that time, right on the, uh, the sideline there with the two-man trap. You have to keep him there. You can't let that guy split that um, trap. We'll be right back after these messages. The college basketball season is underway for 1994-95, and the Great Lakes Valley Conference has been rated by some as the toughest of the NCAA Division II conferences. Join Coach Andy Piazza and me, Matt DeLong, to get a closer look at the IPFW team and this year's competition. Pointers brought them back. They had about a five point lead a little earlier, let it get away, and then they were able to push it back up. So let's see if they can sustain the good defensive effort now. The foul situation, not good, Charlie. Uh, St. Joe is now in the bonus. It's IPFW seventh team foul, whereas the Pumas have committed only two fouls. And thus far, it's pretty surprising we haven't seen Coach Piazza up complaining uh, too much about the foul situation. Last Thursday night's game was very similar. I don't think IPFW even took a free throw in the first half and then ended up hitting like 16 out of 20 in the second half. That time, the free throw didn't hurt them. Missed by St. Joe, IPFW. Rebound, and they're on the offensive attack now. Dish off by Ryan Glidden. Good pass. That's what hitting two three-pointers would do for you. Everybody's cognizant of your ability to hit the three-point shot, and you can get an open uh, alley to the lane and then just dish it off when the help comes. Good trap. Ah, uh, yeah, and the pressure 
caused uh, an errant pass right to KC Runyon. I'm surprised he didn't call offensive goaltending on that, Charlie. When your I hands in it, if, the, if, if the it hadn't gone in, gone. yeah. If they hadn't, I'd have been hollering probably a whole <laughs> lot. Good hustle that time by Glidden, but couldn't get there quick enough and commits the foul right over half court. I think another reason why Dave the Dons don't shoot very many free throws, they're really uh, a lot of set jump shot yeah. shooters, yeah. set shooters on the team, and uh, not just slashers who get to the basket and get uh, get fouled and get a chance to go to the line quite a bit versus uh, St. Joe, who have quite a bit of those slasher, slashy yeah, type of players who are going to tend to get to the uh, middle of the lane and get some fouls. As Ryan Davis hits the front end. He cans the first one. 24-16 in favor of the IPFW Mastodons. IPFW roll on that miss. Whirling with the ball in the corner out to Marcinic out top who sets it up. Bond had good position that time, had the defense sealed off. And number 33, Rod Bailey tried to go through him. Third team foul. I wasn't paying a lot of attention, Dave, and then when I heard you say 6'9 uh, and 6'9, uh, they're kind of small 6'9s out there for the Pumas. Well, maybe, yeah. I guess six nine in the newspaper doesn't necessarily mean you're quite that tall. Huh? Thirty three, going to draw another foul. Rod Bailey. Yeah, and actually they could have called uh, Patterson also for the uh, for the foul. Also, uh, they set some uh, setting some picks there, or not so much picks, some blocks, trying to keep Glitton from cutting through the yeah. lane. And uh, yeah. Peterson got him with the shot, and then uh, Bailey got him with the shot. So the referee could blow his whistle and take his pick of the purple shirt that he wanted to call a foul on. Nice dish off. Wouldn't fall that time. And Perkins is back in the basketball game uh, for the Pumas. Shaking off that uh, apparent um, ankle, ankle injury. Yep. IPFW needs to be real careful here. They've got a got a lead, not a big one, but they don't want to let St. Joe back in from the freezer line. Make them earn it. Exactly. It's very important what happens uh, these last five minutes or so, um, particularly the last three minutes of the half and then the first three or so minutes of the second half. Very key points in a basketball game. Well, Perkins took a long time to think about that one and got the roll. DJ Hollowell replaces Russ Marcinic. Both of these teams very young. They one senior on uh, both rosters collectively, or yeah. two seniors collectively. Nice pass from Perkins to Glidden. <laughs> it's kind of like the quarterback having eight completions, but maybe three being to the other team. Yeah, there you go. nice move by Casey Runyon. I don't think we see Casey do that enough. No. Sometimes um, he's not as aggressive on that offense as he should be. Exactly. I think sometimes Casey um, is more of a perimeter player than he should be. But he's 6'7 and, and, and a wide body. I think he needs to get that frame down in the paint a little bit more. And boy, this is a rash of foul calls here in the first half. But the Pumas aren't helping themselves yeah. at the free throw line. They're at best hitting the um, one out of two and splitting and 50% yeah. from the line's not going to win you many basketball games. And hopefully it won't do it tonight. Just under six minutes to play here in the first half and IPFW to the nine point lead. We'll trade two for ones on that. We'll there take we a bucket and give you a free throw. We'll do that a lot. 
Chad Patterson, a freshman at the line, misses the first one. But there's your one for two. Now let's get the two. If we get yeah, in the right one, back. let's come back and get the two. Uh-oh. Hollowell. He did the shake, but he forgot to bake, and he lost the basketball. But he was bailed out on a foul that time yep. on a loose ball. He, he stayed with it. He lost the ball, but he got down on, uh, he got down the, on floor. the floor. Yep, he went after it. Marsnick back in for Hollowell. Uh, for Whirling. Oh, excuse me, yes, Whirling. And uh, Steve Sanders. Sanders in for Glidden. I'm not sure about that call. There was a lot of contact, but I think um, Claire was leaning a little bit. Yeah. And not only that, I'm not sure there was enough contact to knock him down. The old BLM beer flop move that there you time. Go. Perkins brings it up. The left side, out to Davis. Well, twice he was within him. Uh, we'll see what he does the third time. Yeah. <laughs> that time they stole the basketball from Sanders. And at 6'9", Patterson needs to dunk that basketball. I'm not trying to help him out any, but yeah. at 6'9", he'll might be well, a little better off. Might as well put it home if he's going to be up there. Hollowell out to Marsnick, out front. roll for Russ. Russ doesn't shoot very much, but he gets the most out of his shots. Yeah. Good pass that time by Perkins. And again, he's he's visibly shaken uh, from that ankle injury. He's out there playing and giving it the best, but he's hurt a little bit. And with the score 28-22, in favor of IPFW. We'll be right back after these brief messages. Women's basketball coach Pam Bowden is enjoying a fine preseason after coming to IPFW from the University of Alaska Anchorage. She has inherited a club which returns no seniors, but still enjoys one of the top ratings in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. We want you to tune in every Wednesday at 7.30 to find out more information about the IPFW women's basketball team all season long. Four thirty-five left here in the basketball game. Charles Washington bringing you the action along with James Skelton. Don's up 28-22. Charlie, we see some early stats on the, the first half here. IPFW shooting very well, 12 for 17. But the seven turnovers, uh, which isn't too awfully bad, they, it's, it's holding them back a bit from really cutting loose. What are um, the Puma shooting from the free throw line, Dave? Uh, they are six for 12. You're, you were right on, 50%. <laughs> Marzenich brings the ball up. Adams back in the basketball game. Out to Hollowell up top. Sanders drives the lane. And they call it travel. Hmm. Might have been a questionable call. But he called it. Well, we get the big bucks to do this. That's not right. Referee, right. That's right. <laughs> I think we're paid about what they're worth. <laughs> now in the NBA, that'll get you a fine. Big guy, 35. Chad Patterson comes up with another bucket. He's hit about their, at least their last six and maybe eight points. Foul on Ryan Davis that time. Adams did something that you don't want your big man to do. Dip the ball a little bit. Once yep. you get the pass, keep that basketball up high. 
For all you young players out there, keep it high. Sixth team foul on, I, on uh, St. Joe. So the next foul, IPFW will go to the free throw line. If it's in this half. We haven't been able to get the ball inside much. Uh, we've, we're doing all right on the threes. Steve Sanders kept the three. And that's why we don't go to the free throw line very much, Dave, because yeah. we uh, shoot a lot of threes and don't drive the lane very much. But we're up 31-24. We'll take it. We'll take that. Chad Patterson, the big freshman, had with hanging on with the ball, didn't know what to do with it. Threw it away. And that's where you don't want your big man with the basketball, and it proved that time that you don't want your big man out top making a decision. Yeah. T.J. Holloway, Hollowell, and, and Russ Marsnick both in the lineup, so we should have pretty good ball handling. Steve Sanders, I think, will either Steve or T.J. will go to the line, shoot the one and one. And that's what an offense with a lot of movement would do that for you. Uh, give you a lot of movement, a lot of um, a lot of picks, call a lot of switching, and sometimes uh, our opponents just have to grab you and hold you. There should have been a lane violation that time. Should have been, and they did. They called it, didn't they? Number 32, Chad Pulver. He was planted in the lane before Sanders ever got in the motion of shooting, and he misses again. 0 for 2 for the free throw line for this half for the Dons. And Patterson got away with the travel that time. Well, you get a step and a half. He just took two big ones. <laughs> Offensive foul called against number 35, Chad Patterson. Patterson came into the game playing very tentative, but I tell you what, Dave, he got three easy layups, and then right away, newfound confidence, and now he's playing like a world beater yeah, out there. He got pumped up. Taking a three-point shot. Yeah. I'm not sure if you want your big 6'9 center or forward, maybe, out there taking that kind of shot. Jason Burkhart back into the lineup for IPFW. Ryan Bond will go to the line. See if Ryan can't get us off of that goose egg on the free throw line. And he does. I guess before I spoke, he shoot. He came into the game shooting 33% from out there. That's not terrible. Six for 18. IPFW not helping itself at the free throw line at the moment. But they have an eight-point lead, 32-24 here with two and a half minutes to go in the half. St. Joe looks a little disorganized at the moment, Charlie, in their offensive set. Again, when you make those types of wholesale substitutions, it's kind of hard yeah. to get the right chemistry out there. Jason Burkhardt with the ball in the corner to Glitton. Glitton to Sanders out top. Burkhardt on the wing. Put the ball on the floor, Jason, you're gonna. He heard you, Dave. Hey, yeah. We lost it. That time, Steve Sanders had absolutely nowhere to go. Three defenders and the baseline. Oh, and they called an offensive foul that time, apparently. I wasn't paying much attention. I guess that was it. And we're shooting free throws on an offensive foul. That must have meant it was not a player control yeah, foul. Yeah. And number 40 for the Pumas, Chris Young. Shoots and hits. 6'4 freshman out of St. Charles, Illinois. St. Charles, Illinois. Where would that be? Oh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's uh, kind of a next-door neighbor to St. Louis. Oh. On the west side. Something like that. Young nails both free throws. Narrows the gap a bit. Six point deficit for the Pumas. IPFW needs something good to happen on the offense here. Yeah. 
Good move, good follow. Second good follow. Denson, great move. Yeah, he really did. He took off. He was uh, determined that time. That's a lot of athletic ability on that move that time. A lot of body control that time by Jensen. So St. Joe has cut that eight-point lead in half now. That'll help. Good shot that time by TJ Hollowell. Yeah, the three-point shot has been uh, saving the Don's bacon here tonight. We're living by the sword and just hope we don't perish by it. Well, we'll come back second half and go inside. Ryan Davis misses the three. Jason Burkhardt with the rebound. Out to Marsnick. Down there fighting for the rebounds. Out to Marsnick to Glidden. Inside to Bond. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Okay. Is that an offensive foul? No, it was a travel he called. Would you believe that? that he maybe he shouldn't say too much. Seven seconds. Boomers are going to go for our last, and that should be... I thought he had his foot on the line. They called it a three-pointer. They called it a three. And as the half ends, the Don's clinging on to a narrow, but indeed a lead. Four yeah. points, 35 to 31. In that first half, Charlie had some uh, stretches to it that were very, very ragged. Some other stretches where some things went pretty well. So it'll be interesting to see how things open up when the second half begins. Overall, like you said, I think the Dons will need to take the ball inside. Uh, we did pretty good um, shooting from the outside, uh, nailing a, um, a good percentage of three-point uh, shots. So in the second half, we can kind of pound the ball on the inside and keep, keep it open on the outside. I think we'll be fine. Well, a 35-31 lead. Uh, the biggest lead of the half, I think, was probably about nine, maybe at one point in time. Uh -huh. We'll take it. And we'll be right back in about 10 or 15 minutes or so with the second half Great Lakes Valley basketball action. IPFW up at halftime again, 35-31 for the St. Joe Puma. First-year IPFW women's basketball coach Pam Bowden is enjoying a fine preseason after coming to IPFW from the University of Alaska Anchorage. She has inherited a club which returns no seniors but still enjoys one of the top ratings in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. We want you to tune in every Wednesday at 7.30 to find out more information about the IPFW women's basketball team all season long. In our ever-expanding world, we need a reliable source, one that addresses important aspects of our daily lives and provides us with useful information. Health and Home Report is that source, with stories on how to get the most for your money, where to go for a great vacation, hot fashion tips, what's happening in the world of arts and entertainment, and the latest medical breakthroughs. Health and Home Report provides a world of information.
The college basketball season is underway for 1994-95, and the Great Lakes Valley Conference has been rated by some as the toughest of the NCAA Division II conferences. Join Coach Andy Piazza and me, Matt DeLong, to get a closer look at the IPFW team and this year's competition. I'm Becky Mark for Channel 6, reporting for a halftime program. Members of the IPFW men's and women's volleyball teams took time out of their busy schedules to promote staying in school and staying off drugs to a group of Northwood Middle School students. Under the leadership of Coach Arnie Ball, the teams demonstrated how setting goals, working hard, and good communication skills are all part of living a successful and fulfilling life. As the athletes introduced themselves, they shared with the seventh graders their academic goals and aspirations. You could see how impressed the students were, especially after learning the international flair IPFW Volley Dons have to offer. My name is Carly Gerdian. I'm a freshman here at IPFW. I'm pre-med biology, and I'm from Lincoln, Indiana. I'm Ricardo Soler from Cabo, Puerto Rico. And I'm a sophomore here. Coach Ball stressed to the students how fortunate they are to live in the United States. He shared stories with coaching in other countries and being shocked to see how foreign students do not have the advantages of the American student. Letters are received daily from foreign athletes hoping for an opportunity to study and play volleyball right here at our very own IPFW. Coach Ball spoke to the students about the four C's, crisis, concerns, consequences, and communication. With the help from the women, he was able to demonstrate the fourth C, communication. The students caught on quickly as they joined in yelling, mine, with the team during this drill. Senior Felipe Rolat, better known as Pepa from Puerto Rico, is always a crowd favorite. Here, he helps Coach Ball, once again stressing the importance of communication. As Coach Ball communicates by using hand signals, Pepa knows which serve to execute. The Volley Don showed the importance of teamwork by using this blocking drill. Here, the outside blocker instructs the middle blocker when they will jump as a team. They block the opposition spike. As you can see, the other team members know intuitively to fall into their own defensive position. Many long hours of practicing together as a team makes this drill appear easy. However, when you add an aggressive six foot nine inch offensive hitter ready to smash the volleyball right down your team's throat, you can appreciate the importance and precision of this team drill. Good communication skills and setting your goals will not get you too far unless you add plenty of hard work. Here, the men and women demonstrate this by the hustle and concentration to retrieve the ball. No matter how impossible Coach Ball makes it for them, Coach Ball seems to really get a thrill out of this drill. These drills simply reinforce in an impressive and exciting way the goals can be reached with the right actions and attitudes. Some of the students were given an opportunity to win an IPFW Volley Don program or t-shirt. With a little instruction from the pros, all they had to do was hit one of the targets by serving from the back row. Easier said than done. After maneuvering some of the targets, all of the servers got to go home with a prize and a free invitation to all of the home Volley Don matches, only if they promised to wear their new Volley Don t-shirts. The students were left with many words of encouragement as the athletes said their goodbyes. Uh, I'm not only one thing, if you think it's right in your head, so you feel that it's wrong somewhere else, just do what you think is right no matter what. You have to do what you think is right in your mind. The faculty at Northwood Middle School rewarded their 7th grade class to this inspirational exhibition for having a successful 1994-1995 school year. The students were a terrific audience and were definitely impressed by the caliber of the athletic abilities of the IPFW's 
men and women volleyball players. Many of the students asked for autographs at the end of the program. This left the coaches and players feeling great that they knew that their message was well received. IPFW's Chancellor, Michael Wartell, was proud to announce Tuesday, the 14th of February, that Stanley Butch Perchin has been named the new director of intercollegiate athletics for the university. A news conference was held in the Royal Dons Club room located in the Hilliard Gate Sports Arena. Perchin will replace Arnie Ball, who will turn his full attention to coaching the nationally renowned men's volleyball team, as well as serving as assistant to the athletic director. The planning and organization of the McKay Development Project will remain a primary focus for Coach Ball. In addition, Dan Gephardt, IPFW's acting assistant athletic director since 1989, has been promoted to associate athletic director for operations. Perchin, a 1969 graduate of Ashland University, will bring a wealth of experience to his new post to IPFW. Since 1984, he has served Tri-State University as both Director of Development and Athletics. Under Perchin's direction, Tri-State University has seen unprecedented growth in the past 11 years. As Athletic Director, he was responsible for the Athletic Department's growth from 12 intercollegiate sports to the current number of 20. He also guided the Athletic Department's fundraising efforts from 4,000 in 1984 to 100,000 in 1994-1995 academic year. As Director of Development for the University, he has overseen all aspects of Tri-State's current 20 million capital campaign. Chancellor Wartell had the following to say. We're, we're very pleased to welcome uh, Butch Perchin to the IPFW family, which was formerly the, uh, well actually he is now a development person and former athletic director at uh, Tri-State University. And we know that he will uh, do a wonderful job for us and we look forward to increasing the quality of an already excellent program here at IPFW. Perchin began his educational career in 1969 as a teacher and coach at Ravenna High School located in Ravenna, Ohio. In 1974, he was named Assistant Director of Athletics at the Tri-State University, a position he held until 1981 when he was named Dean of Students at the University. Leaving the educational field for a short time in 1983, Perchin was the Director of Sales and Marketing at Lubertronics Incorporated, located in Angola, Indiana, until assuming his most recent position at Tri-State University in 1984. What, what we heard in the, uh, the interview process is that uh, clearly the, uh, the upper echelon of this institution and the coaching staff would like to become uh, the premier NCAA Division II program in the country. And uh, much of that is in place now. But uh, there's much we can do to make it better, in our opinion. So I think that's what we envision as growth, making this the best Division II uh, college program in the country. On behalf of Channel 6, I would like to welcome Butch and his wife to the university and look forward to his official starting date of March 1, 1995. I'm Becky Mark, and thanks again for joining us during our halftime report. Now, back to the Hillier Gate Sports Center for more basketball action against St. Joseph College and IPFW. Hello, I'm Arnie Ball, and I'm Tim Hester. Watch us every Friday evening at 7 p.m. for IPFW Volleyball on Highlights. We'll also describe strategies and fundamentals for all you new volleyball fans. We, we may even invite a volleyball or two to join us on the show, so tune in to us every Friday night at 7 p.m. here on Channel 6.
it out. The campus has it all. Learn it, or work it, or play it. Just do it. It's a cool place. Call now. Go to school, go ahead. Welcome back to the IPFW Gates Athletic Center. Second half action about ready to start here, Charlie. And as we look at the statistics, some very interesting things. IPFW has shot exceptionally well as a team. 67%, 14 for 21. But they had 11 turnovers, and they were out-rebounded pretty badly. On the other side of the coin, uh, St. Joe's number 13, Kevin Denson. Terrific half. He did not miss a shot of any kind, including the three-point shot he took just at the end of the half. And he had some acrobatic, very good moves. Yes, he did. Uh, very good athlete. Um, the Dons, again, as we said um, at the outset, or at, I guess at the end of the first half, they lived by that outside shot. And, and the, as you stated, shot very well. And hopefully this um, half we can open up the inside game and yeah. keep that outside game going. Yeah, if they could get a little consistency on the inside and keep some of that outside going as it will, then they could slowly uh, move some things into a pretty good position here in this game. And I found out during halftime, uh, didn't find out any specifics, but Harry Perry is here. So not back home in Rensselaer. Uh, okay. He is here sitting on the bench. I don't know if it's an injury or disciplinary uh, purposes, academics. I'm not sure uh, why he is on the bench, but indeed he is on the bench in street clothes. Yeah. And that's fine. That's yes. 20 points can stay on the bench. Just so he didn't come back out in the second half in uniform. And Denson has still yet to miss a shot. And he's going to the free throw line to try and complete the three-point play. Well, he got inside that time, and, and IPFW's help defense wasn't there quickly enough. Having a whale of a basketball game, shooting for his 17th point, and he's got it. A little and different look for the Adans uh, in the second half here, Dave. And that's uh, including the tail end of the first half. And here, that's seven points in a row by the Pumas. Good put back that time by yeah. Casey Runya. He had a hard time finding the handles on that ball, but once he did, he was able to put it back up. And they needed that. They don't want St. Joe to have an opportunity here quickly to take that lead in the second half. They also have a different look for the second half. Both teams uh, didn't like what the game starters brought, and they brought in some new players. As we have a hole that time by Marsnick on Ryan Davis. You know, it's an interesting thing, it seems to me, in basketball the last couple of years. The little ticky-tack stuff out at the top, out away from the action, will be called because you can see it a little better. Get inside and you can bounce somebody all the way around like we just saw there. And maybe we'll see a foul. Yeah, I, and I think um, basketball as a whole has taken on the theme of the NBA. The NBA yeah. has started to uh, strongly call that hand check. So if you put your hand on someone, they're gonna call that. And I think that's just up in the trend all the way yeah. down through the ranks. Yeah. Whirling with the ball out top to Marcinek with the shot, and it's good. A three. And Mar just Mar like that, 
the lead is back to six. Great shot. Marsnick, the son of a coach, back in Hammond, Indiana, from the region, Hammond Old Standout. You happen to know a little bit about that area? A little bit about yeah, the region. Okay. <laughs> Dad used to coach Hammond Morton. Chris Young guides one in from the paint. Don't think he started the basketball game, and he's a starter in the second half of this basketball game. So coach must have liked what he saw from Young in the first half. Whirling, looking inside, now back outside to Marsnick to Sanders, who tries the lane, and he likes it. Nice move. Nice move. Goes left. Perkins. Oh, my. Oh, my. That's a lot of contact. Yeah. <laughs> Perkins' ankle must feel a little better. Has to feel real good after that one. Sanders hard off the backboard. Inside to Runyon to Marsnick. Have a foul. Must have been some sort of contact inside the lane because I didn't see anything that was blatant elsewhere. I think they called it on Perkins. Number 20 called for his second. Against uh, Marsnick, maybe? I mean, Perkins. As, as he was pushing. Yeah. I think he pushed Russ Marsnick in the back a little bit. I lost my sound. I can't hear Charlie. Runyon outside to Jackson. A new insert into the basketball game. Corner to Bond. Sanders recovers. Sanders handling now top to Runyon. Marsnick back to Sanders. Sanders pass inside Bond. Ryan with a little luck could have gotten that shot to fall and would be shooting for three, but let's see if he can step up and get a couple at the line. Played about three minutes and IPFW has been able to maintain that margin from halftime, but they need to stretch it out a little bit. Yeah, they played as stalemate thus far. Ryan, oh. Ryan didn't look too good on that. He didn't have much follow through on the shot. We'll no see legs. if he recovers this You're time. right, no follow through and no legs in the shot. Have to use those legs. Jeff Sosserman in for the St. Joe Pumas. Well, better that time, but didn't get it to fall. Davis brings it up against Marsnick. Young. Out top. Jensen. Drives baseline. Good move. And he missed a shot. News for the day, right? Yes. This is one. Yes. Let's hope that miss by Denson is the start of another streak for him. Whoa, whoa, and he was on the out of bounds in the whole bit here. All right. Strange play that time. Real strange. Again, and I said it a little earlier, um, Patterson got caught that time in no man's land where you want your 6'9 player to be on the wing. All you want your 6'9 player to do is catch the ball and lay it in instead of having to dribble. And, and where he caught the ball that time, he needed two or three dribbles. And you don't want that from your big guy. Jeff Jackson with the ball in the corner to Runyon. Runyon looks. Bond out top. Sanders. He got a good look at the basket and couldn't get it to fall. Casey yeah, got the roll. Wasn't pretty, but I'm sure Casey will take it. It looks like a slam dunk in the yeah, box that's score. Right. Don's up by six with 15 45 to go in the ballgame. 44 38. Denson out to Patterson. I believe I'd let him shoot a good bit out there behind <laughs> that three point line. He hurt us inside, but he hadn't hurt as much from out there, so no. I think you're right, Dave. Sanders thinks about it, thinks twice, passes inside. Bond.
looked like a loose ball, but I think we uh, got Sanders on a push. Yeah. Right? Team foul number three on the Dons. Jason Worley set to re-enter the basketball game. And I think Sanders will exit. Probably will, because that's his third foul. And we're 15 minutes yet to go in the ball game. Why? Coach Piazza won't want to risk it. And he'd be getting a breather somewhere along the line soon anyway. And IPFW goes a little small. As the Pumas call a little timeout here. And may want to develop a little strategy, you suppose, for a smaller lineup? I think so. Well, you too can join in the excitement of IPFW Athletics by participating in the Royal Dons Club. The Royal Dons Club is the official booster club for IPFW's athletic teams. Members enjoy priority seating at all IPFW sports events, food and refreshments in the hospitality room, and admission to the IPFW sports media luncheons. An association with other Mastodon supporters, just to name a few benefits. For information on becoming a member of the Royal Dons Club, call Jan Walco at 481-6642 or write to Royal Dons Club, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, with a zip code of 46805. And I think, Jess, as we stated, uh, um, Puma is calling a timeout to set some strategy. And during the timeout, um, Perkins entered on uh, the lineup. So, again, they are adjusting to the small lineup uh -huh. by PFW. And we'll see how long uh, Coach Piazza goes here with, well, he's got two pretty good-sized guys, though, that he can play the inside with. Casey Runyon, Ryan Bond. Davis brings it up against Marcinet in the corner to Young. Number 44 in the ball game, Doug Kelly. Run he can hit that. Yes. KC can definitely hit that shot as you just saw, but still, I'd like to see him uh, bang a little <laughs> bit more. Yeah. I'd like to see this defense stay pretty good. The Dons have really been going at him here in the last couple of minutes. Young got to Davis. IPFW is almost into a uh, zone set. And Perkins takes advantage of a smaller... Jason Whirling on the baseline. I think the Dons uh, looked like it did look something like a matchup zone of, of some yeah. sort there, Dave. Perkins trying to complete the three point play. And he does. Referee was counting up. Perkins used up all of his seconds there yeah. on the free throw line. Ryan Glidden into the lineup for Jason Whirling. Glidden gives us a little more firepower on the offense. Runyon out top. Bond back to Runyon for another. He's going to try it again. Why not? Same spot. He's got an X marked out here. You just can't see it, Charlie. trying to make me eat my words about liking to see him down in the paint a little more. Well, if he'd hit a couple more threes, would that be right? And then he could go down into the paint. <laughs> Bailey about to enter the lineup for the Pumas. Bailey, a name that's very familiar with Indiana natives, yes, but not that Bailey. That's right. But that Bailey was in the city uh, either today or yesterday signing autographs at uh, Scott's and Clinton. Oh, is that right? Yes. I uh, understand he's gone uh, into some workouts now after the surgery, yes. so he'll be 
perhaps seeing a little action with the Pacers one of these days. Yes, he is practicing, and if um, there is an injury to any of the guards um, on the Pacers, he's very likely to be activated. Here come the Dons again. And we just heard word from our Scott statistician that Damon Bailey was indeed today signing autographs at Scott's on Clinton. IPFW with the ball and a nine-point lead. An opportunity here to stretch that out a little bit if, with some good offensive patience. And so far, they're looking and working hard. Good pass. Nice move inside by Ryan Bond. Jason Burkhardt made that play possible. He, yep. made, he turned a bad pass and went and got the ball. He came to the basketball, but you want to teach young players, and made a very good touch pass to Bond, who drove the baseline for a good layup. Skip pass to Young for three, and it's off the cable, out of bounds. Um, there's a play while we were talking about Damon Bailey, Dave. Um, the Pumas had the ball, and they made an, in an inbound pass, a bounce pass that hit the uh, in line, and that is a turnover. Yep. And that's what gave the Dons an opportunity, which they cashed in on. Exactly. Marcinet to Jackson. Out top to Burkhardt. Big country, as they call it. Marcinet for three. And he put that baby up in the air so it wouldn't get uh, blocked, and, and it switched. It was perfect. Time off for the Pumas. As the Dons grab a hold to a 14-point lead with 12.25 to go in the ball game. Tune in to Channel 6 next Saturday evening, February 25 at 7.30 to watch the Buckeyes from Ohio State University take on the IPFW Mastodons in volleyball. Catch all the action of GLVC basketball and of the Midwest Intercollegiate Volleyball Association right here on Channel 6. Pretty important at this stage of the game, Charlie, with 12 and a half minutes to go, the, the Dons have stretched out a, a, a little lead here. Pretty important for them to keep playing con with some consistency and not let the Pumas get back into the ball game. Exactly. Uh, sometimes some teams that uh, grab a big lead have a tendency um, to put themselves to sleep. Uh, they figure, hey, we have a big lead. We can kind of you know, rest on our laurels. And sometimes they let other teams back into the basketball game. And as you stated, it's very important that the Dons don't do that in this case. That they come out very hard after this timeout. Yeah, a couple of times tonight they've, uh, they've had a seven, eight, nine point lead and then let it uh, sneak back down on them. Shooting very good still for the Dons. Still shooting 67%. That's, and, a, that's an amazing uh, stat from the field, considering how many outside shots they've taken. And, and they're shooting that same 67% from the three-point line. And again, the Pumas have trouble. After calling a timeout, I think the referees are telling them they're taking too long, and they're starting the five count as the Pumas are still coming out of their inbound huddle. A there's three a three pointer. Yes. Referee a little indecisive that time, or whether it was a two or three that time by Perkins, who's playing an outstanding basketball game. His ankle's feeling better and better all the time. Knocking down some shots to do that for you. As we have a foul on number 21, who's just entered the basketball game for the first time. Brian Phillips, a 6'2 sophomore out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Yep, Brian got a little over anxious that time, thought he could uh, tower over Russ. Uh, Jeff Jackson. And Jeff got a little careless again with that entry pass to the post. That's, exactly. That's uh, We know what Coach Piazza is going to have Jeff working on in practice. Yeah. That's the second um, entry pass to the post that Jeff um, is kind of fuddled up today. Yeah, he could take a couple of more steps before he ever has to put it in there. That's a two. Another missed shot by Denson. He's cooling off. That sure looked like it went off of Puma. That's good hustle yeah, that time by yeah. Bailey. Hollowell enters for Marcinet. Russ has been playing hard. Needs a breather here. Russ always plays hard. He brings, he laces it up, ready to go every game. 
So Walter Perkins is picking it up here a little bit in the second half. Well, they have 20 points they have to make up for, and he and Denson are <laughs> trying to find them. Those 20 points coming from Harry Perry, who's yeah. on the bench in street clothes. Burkhart fakes a three. Hollowell takes it. Well, that three is still there. And that's, Hallelujah. <laughs> that's a third, at least a third one for Hollowell tonight. Yeah. Playing well. Perkins got a little careless that time. He wanted to give his playground one-on-one -on -one move. Yeah, and, uh, exactly. Carried the ball. I was just going to say, they don't call that on the playground. That's a good move. <laughs> That's right. Hollowell out front. Looking for somebody to pass to, and he finds Glidden. Glidden to Bond. Burkhart. Good fake by Jackson. Yeah, Jeff gets in and gets to, uh, close to the shot that he knows he can hit. Doesn't take the outsider. He's not a great three-point shooter. He works hard for a good shot. And that's part of being a, a good basketball player, recognizing exactly. your strengths, and knowing yep. what you can and can't do, finding that range. Patterson with Bond on him. Bailey. Denson with Jackson. Ten-minute mark here of the second half. That's about as easy as it gets. Nice move that time by Denson. He kind of looked like Grant Hill going baseline on that play. Yeah, he took uh, took the baseline. No rotation out of the defense to cut the baseline off. Hollowell tries the baseline out to Jackson. Bond looks, skips it across to Hollowell. Good pass. That's a great pass that time by yeah. Hollowell. He had to open the shot, and some may say he should have taken the shot, but you can't miss a wide open big man because if you don't get the ball to a wide open big man, they'll stop rebounding <laughs> and running the floor for you. Yeah. There, there we see the uh, Great Lakes Valley's conference standings for the men. Kentucky Wesleyan, Northern Kentucky, and Southern Indiana, all three out in front. Indianapolis having an awfully good year, Charlie, but they're going to have a tough time uh, getting into postseason play because there's three great records ahead of them. Exactly, and there are only four teams from the region, um, the Great Lakes region, that go to the tournament, so they're going to have an awful tough time getting there. It's going to be very tough to take four teams out of one conference yeah. um, to the tournament. Patterson. Big guy. One out of three. three. That's just 33 percent. He came in yep. six for 18, and he's one for three tonight. Timeout for a shoe repair. Now T.J. Hollowell is ready to go. Jeff Jackson better look back to help bring the ball inbounds. 9:06 on the clock. Nine-point lead for the Dons. Hollowell playing very well. Nobody on the offense is uh, swinging loose. Nice pass. Nice entry pass. Good layup by Ryan Glidden. I don't know how Glidden got that up over the big guy. But I don't either. I don't know how Bond got the pass in there. <laughs> he got it up there and put enough English on it to get it in. Good slashing move that time by Perkins, and that's what you can call him, a slasher. Yes. Fifth, fourth foul on Jeff Jackson. Sixth team foul against IPFW. Steve Sanders getting ready to enter the lineup, as is Russ Marsnick. Hollowell and Jackson exit, and both have played very good basketball games tonight. And they'll see some more action before this one's over, I think. Any coach would reward good play. And those two have certainly exemplified that this evening. Walter Perkins from Orlando, Florida. That's a long way to Rensselaer, Indiana. Yes, it is. And about 60 degrees difference in winter temperature, too. 
Our producer, Greg Smith, just added home of Mickey Mouse. Well, the second home of Mickey Mouse. <laughs> he started in California. Marcinek out front with Perkins all over him. Gets good out of the corner. Good decision not to take that baseline because he was going to get eaten alive. Litton to Bond. Skip pass to Marcinek. Well, there is a foul probably before. I think they call that on the floor. It but it'll be, be a one-and-one. One. One. So hit that first one, and it'll be academic. I think Marcinic caught Glitton off guard. Glitton not used to being down there under the uh, basket with the big boys. Well, and Marcinic wasn't exactly wanting to go in there for a <laughs> slam dunk. Glitton doesn't come up with the free throw. Eight minutes to go. The Don's up by 10, 62 to 52. Charles Washington bringing the action with Dave Skelton from the Master Dome. Defense going to have to pick things up here a bit because they're letting the, the Pumas score at will almost. Patterson playing a very good game, hitting about the eight-footer from the dotted line. If there was a dotted line, a that's little, where it would have been. A little standing around on the offense. We've got to get things moving here. Sanders. Fortunately, a little shove there because he was either going to go out of bounds or be traveled. Yeah, there, there wasn't much uh, Bond can do. Mm -hmm. Had three men on him, actually. I'm not sure um, how good a decision passing the ball entering the pass there anyway would have been. He could have dished off, but it didn't look like anybody was, was alert enough for him to be able to dish off to Exactly. Them We're not moving uh, very much. You have uh, one person dribbling around a little bit, one person cutting out top, and other than that, you don't have very much movement. Big free throw by Ryan Bond at that time. IPFW needed to get off of that uh, 62 that they were stuck on for a while. And he gets them both. Back to a 10-point lead. Less than seven and a half minutes to go. Wayne Nada, former Southside Archer. Davis. Long rebound. Only the purple shirt saw it coming. Perkins dribbles off his foot and it goes right to Sanders. Marcinic. Wow. Okay. I, su I suspect Coach Piazza will be very hoarse after this game tonight because he's had plenty to uh, yell about. Actually, it seems he's kept his composure pretty well. Yeah, he has. Sanders. Come on. Come on. Boy, I tell you, I even had my bifocals focused in on that one. I missed it, Charlie. Well, I thought the call would have been a very late travel. I well, thought yeah. Sanders yeah. may have traveled, but it would have been a very late call, and I certainly didn't see the foul either. Maybe it was because the guy was hanging on him. But, uh, Maybe they're evening out from the first half. Could those be. foul calls. Sanders goes in line and nails the first one. And the next foul, it'll be two shots anyway. Yeah. So after this, it won't matter. And Sanders nails them both, giving the Dons a 12-point advantage at 66 to 54 with 6.15 left to play in the game. Denson with a good acrobatic move, but it comes up empty. And a save to the white shirts. They've got the numbers. They better watch, though, because if they don't, ah, right, couldn't quite handle the ball. That probably should have been a bounce pass that time yeah. by, uh, by uh, Russ Marsnick. Ryan Bond so thought so, too. <laughs> yeah, I just saw his hand motion. If bounce it, Russ. Bounce it, baby. If it could have been down where he could handle it. 
We're under six minutes. Deflection that time by the Dons. Pumas will take the ball out of bounds, trailing 66 to 54. Davis will inbounds to Denson. Yep, a reach, reach foul, got enough, but Denson's got enough ball control that you're gonna have to do more than just a little contact with him to stop him. He's a good athlete, and, and he's proven tonight as he's went to the basket very strong with some pretty nifty moves, Dave. Yeah, St. Joe would have been in big trouble without him tonight. Perfect on the free throw. Nine point lead. Marksman. Glitton quickly puts up the three and misses. Denson up high for the board. Very quickly. Another deflection that time. Good defense that time by the Don. Yeah, good thing Russ Marsnick got his hand on that because Ryan Bond was had gone for the steal and the Pumas had the numbers. If they could have gotten inside, we'd have been in trouble. Good rebound that time by Don's leading rebounder, averaging about six and a half a game, Ryan Bond. Litton looks baseline. Passes outside to Sanders. Can't get one to fall right now. We're inside of five minutes, so they're going to have to get some a little more firepower. Can't run the clock out yet. I think we have to get a little better shots than the ones that we've been taking. The last two or three possessions here. Good defense. Ryan Glidden was alert, tipped the ball loose back underneath. Now we need to see some offensive movement out of the Mastodons. You've had quite a few uh, Don players play very well, Dave. It's going to be pretty hard to find a, uh, a player of the game. Yeah, it could be. We may, uh, although there's been several make some contributions here tonight. Maybe one of those intangible nights, someone that's Might added be. the right spark Might and be. not directly look um, at the stats. Again, the Dons, uh, they use all the clock, but they don't get a pretty good shot yeah, out of yeah. it. Didn't, didn't get a much smooth offense going. Once Ryan Bond got it uh, down inside, he had to pitch it out somewhere. Just under four minutes. Whoa, travel. Oh, my. Oh, wow. Okay. Two points for the Master, for the Pumas. That lead's cut down to seven. At one time, Perkins got halfway back to Rensselaer on that Yes, move. he did, without the ball hitting the floor. Marcinig just dribbling out front, no movement. on the shot clock, so they've got to start looking now for the good shot. Russ is going to have to take it. And again, didn't draw iron. And not getting back on the offense, or our defensive end. Maybe time for a timeout. And indeed it is. It sure is. With, with Three minutes to go. Don's only up by five now. The IPFW men's tennis team is selling $20 worth of pizza savings from Pizza Hut for just $3. The coupon books are available at the IPFW athletic office from 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. Or you can stop on out to any IPFW athletic event during the month of February and pick up one of these booklets at the concession stand. By purchasing this coupon book, you will help the IPFW men's tennis team raise funds for scholarships for the 1995-96 tennis season. So buy several sets and help the IPFW tennis scholarship fund at the same time. 
These coupons are valid at any Allen County Pizza Hut restaurant. Charlie, it's time for a little strategy from the Mastodon huddle down there with three minutes to go and uh, things down to a five-point lead. It's uh, definitely time for some movement. Well, I think it's uh, it may be time to change the offense that the Dons have uh, basically been running uh, for the last um, nine or ten possessions, uh, definitely, because it, yeah. there's not much movement. And I think by now, a lot of times, if you've scouted a team and you know if they run, and definitely by the time you get into the second half, you've got it down. And if there's not much movement, and I think that uh, Puma players are cheating and not playing, uh, they don't have to play because marslick has been dribbling out front, so he's not being a threat. Yeah. And the other players, and you're triple team in the post, so there's not much left. Let's see, there was at least one change in the IPFW lineup during that last timeout. Jason Whirling is now in the lineup. Whirling. Oh, what a big basket. A three. What a big one. Cool water through the veins. Whirling steps into the game and takes the big three. Dennison for a three, and he misses. it. And a foul on number 32, a pushing foul on Chad Pulver of the Pumas. That'll send Ryan Bond to the line, I think. And Ryan, excuse me, they, okay, it was on Pulver. Yes. Casey Runyon will go to the line. No, not Casey. Ryan Bond. Casey must be a better free throw shooter. Tried to sneak in there. have a chance for a second. Two big free throws by Ryan. Stepped up there and he's hit uh, these last four that I can remember for sure. Just a little over two minutes. Perkins out to Denson. Ryan Davis. Jeff Jackson with a rebound. And Perkins caught him on the arm, coming around the side. Opportunity here for Jeff to hit a couple of key free throws. Fifth foul, number 20, Walter Perkins. And he's being replaced by Chad Patterson, big 6'9 freshman. IPFW is now into the two shot foul on every foul. Oops, and Jeff needs the two because he misses the first one. That's what that rule will do for you. That was instituted a couple of years ago, Dave, after. Um, the tenth foul. First of all, seven, you shoot the one and one, and from seven, when you get to ten, you shoot two free throws automatically. Hopefully, that was instituted to cut down some of that last minute fouling, fouling. at the end of the game. Yeah. But actually, I don't think it's affected that very much at all. Patterson misses another three. Jason Whirling very alertly after the ball. Get out of there. Get out of there. Oh! Oh! Bond with the rebound. Early not to Marcinek. Don's up 14 with minute 15 to go. Whirling.
Jeff Jackson took definite exception to the hard foul that time by Chad Peterson. And we do have an intentional foul, which will mean two free throws and the basketball out of bounds. Officials get the situation cleared away. No one lines up at the free throw line. Jeff Jackson is there for two. And he misses the first one. Didn't follow through. Kind of let that arm drop like it was uh, attached to a rubber band. Let's we'll see if he follows through a little bit. Much better. Got to roll. <laughs> the shooters roll. Yep. 76 61. Uh, almost think well you can breathe a little easier here but yet the way this game has gone Charlie <laughs> uh, you may be not going to breathe easily until the gun sounds till the fat lady starts her solo there you go still a decision to be made Gandy Don player of the game there have been quite a few candidates um, a tough decision uh, to make again I'm not sure if um, the stats are something we should go by on this one Dave Maybe not. We've had some rather quiet but yet significant contributions in this game. Some of them have been by points. Some of them have been by rebounds. I think T.J. Hollowell in particular just came in and provided a, a real good spark for the team. Yeah, and hit some uh, big threes. In fact, I'm not sure he's missed on the threes tonight. Jason Whirling has made some significant contributions in the assist department. Has hit a couple of shots. Casey Runyon, a big game on the scoreboard. Yep. Ryan Bond, a very steady game. Very solid. Very, very solid. Russ Marshnick, very steady as usual, yep. and he's knocked down a few three-pointers yep. tonight. Have an offensive foul. That's a that's a uh, makeup call. <laughs> I think the referees, there's about a little bit over a minute to go, and the referees have to be very careful to keep this basketball game in control. It's a 15-point basketball game, and frustration could very easily set in for a yeah. team like yeah. St. Joe, a very young team. So the referees have to grab a hold of the control of this basketball game to make sure there are no major altercations. Denson nails the front end. I think he's been perfect at the free throw line tonight. If he missed one, I must have uh, maybe forgotten it. I would say they have a very bright future um, ahead of them. Uh, Perry, who's not playing, is, is a senior. Uh, but Denson and uh, Perkins, uh, I believe, are sophomores and very good-looking ball players. the first free throw and nails the second free throw. Ball game after a very good ball game. I hit a very key three point jump shot with the game on the line that kind of shifted the tilt of this basketball game, Dave. Played some good defense along the line, too, Charlie. That's the uh, kind of thing you don't see much of. We see into the lineup for the first time tonight, Mark Masterson. Mark, a uh, walk on 
played on my intramural team uh, last year. Jeff Jackson, also a former intramural teammate of mine. Hate to lose those guys because we're struggling this year on the intramural squad, Dave. Well, and Mark is, a, is an interesting young man also, 26 years old. Actually, I think a little older than that. 28, maybe? Yeah, 28, All right. 29. All right. And a good ball player. So with 55 seconds, we have a 78-65 game. Very dangerous pass. Masterson goes up in his foul. He was hammered. And he'll get a chance to get on the scoreboard. Yes, he will. And you have to give this guy all kinds of credit. It's very hard to walk on at, at any uh, level of sporting events, but to come in at this level of basketball um, at 29 years of age and walk on. And I, like I said, I played intramural basketball with the kid, yeah. and he can play. And add to that, that at a tough part of the season, oh, about yeah. December, he had, a, he had an injury that uh, sidelined him for three or four weeks. Very popular with his teammates. Hard-working kid. And I'm glad his fortunes have uh, turned out uh, this good for him, but I love to have him on my intramural team. Dave. <laughs> well, you may have to negotiate with Coach Piazza on that one. <laughs> Davis, nice move. Nice jumper from the paint. Too little, too late, I believe, though. Let's hope. Maybe St. Joe got away with a foul on this deal at the baseline. And again, the referees taking control. Officials having a hard time uh, keeping this one under control. I'm not sure what that call was, whether it was a, a double taunting foul or... Well, I think it was just a basic fifth foul call on uh, Runyon, KC. So he's replaced by Jason Burke. Big country. Number 21, Brian Phillips. 6'2 sophomore going to the line. He's a load, 6'2, and I'm not even going to look down on the sheet because I don't think they'd be telling the truth. He's uh, a load. Yeah, you're right. They don't have the weight, but I'd say it's at least uh, maybe 230. He's solid. Was open and TJ wanted to get him the ball, but he couldn't. Good pass that time. Control by Matheson. It. Bond to Marsnick. Shot clock is off, so the Bondons can run out the clock if they don't take a shot or get fouled. And um, number 25, Jeff, Jeff Susserman. Susserman. Yes. <laughs> He's caught up with Ryan Bond enough to foul him. Jeff, the only other senior on the St. Joe team, along with the young man, Mr. Perry, who is not dressed tonight. One shot, shoot. And another contribution from Ryan Bond. Very solid performance here tonight. His stats are quietly creeping up there with those free throws. every time. Huh? Oh my. Ooh. All right. Well, there you have it. 81, 68. Good guy. Yes. And we'll get down and uh, have a little conversation with our players of the game. A very good group effort um, for the Macedons tonight, Dave. We'll be back after this message.
First-year IPFW women's basketball coach Pam Bowden is enjoying a fine preseason after coming to IPFW from the University of Alaska Anchorage. She has inherited a club which returns no seniors but still enjoys one of the top ratings in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. We want you to tune in every Wednesday at 7.30 to find out more information about the IPFW women's basketball team all season long. Check it out! The campus has it all. Learn it, or work it, or play it, just do it. It's a cool place. Call now! Go to school, go ahead. Talk about unusual. How often do you see transparent televisions? Americans have more money to spend on leisure activities than ever before. When possible, children should trick or treat during daylight hours and be accompanied by at least one adult. A boat archaeologists believe is from the time Jesus and his disciples fished on the Galilee. For best results, fertilize your lawn when it is actively growing. Many people suffer from allergies. Few understand them. The college basketball season is underway for 1994-95, and the Great Lakes Valley Conference has been rated by some as the toughest of the NCAA Division II conferences. Join Coach Andy Piazza and me, Matt DeLong, to get a closer look at the IPFW team and this year's competition. Tim Heffern. Watch us every Friday evening at 7 p.m. for IPFW Volley Down Highlights. We'll also describe strategies and fundamentals for all you new volleyball fans. We, we may even invite a volley down or two to join us on the show, so tune in to us every Friday night at 7 p.m. here on Channel 6. Gates Sports Center on the IPFW campus where the IPFW men's basketball team has just beaten St. Joseph College, the Great Lakes Valley Conference foe. Final score 81-68. We now invite you to go down to the floor as Charlie Washington chats with four Dandy Don players of the game. to be able to bring you cablecasts of the NCAA athletic competition. We hope you've enjoyed the show and the excitement of intercollegiate sports from IPFW. To provide such programs, we need your support. With the help of many volunteers, we are able to produce these programs at a relatively low cost. Your contribution will help defray the production costs not covered by the Channel 6 budget. The College Cable Access Center invites you to invest in quality college programming by sending your contribution to Channel 6 at IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, with a zip code of 46805. Please make your check out to the Indiana Purdue Foundation at Fort Wayne and designate it for College Cable Access Athletics. And now down to the floor with Charlie Washington. Tonight with the IPFW Mastodon Dandy Don players of the game. There are four players of the game. There could have been quite a few more players here, but tonight we're just going to talk to these four guys and get some comments from them. First of all, Ryan Bond, Fort Wayne native, Southside. Took a lot of shots, of uh, altercations tonight, but just some big free throws. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was real rough out there. Uh, the, the rest seemed to uh, let us go. 
and uh, we, uh, we, we wanted some revenge on them. Uh, they were talking all kinds of stuff when we, when we were there at St. Joe. So it got real physical, and they knew that. And, uh, and we, hit, we hit a lot of good free throws at the end uh, to, to ice it. Seemed like they talked a little bit tonight, too. I saw a lot of woofing going out there. Jason, you came in and hit a huge three-point shot when it seemed like the momentum was switching a little bit in terms of uh, St. Joe's favor. Yeah, we, uh, we were starting to get away from the, our game plan. We weren't running an offense, so... Steve got a foul and he put me in and they set a great pick for me and it's wide open. Okay. And KC over there, 14 points with about 12 minutes to go. You kind of snuck up on the stat sheets out there. Yeah, I, I kind of felt the stroke tonight, so I uh, started shooting. And I, I had the last few games I haven't been hitting. I've been like a 3 for 15 out there beyond the arc. And tonight I felt it, so I just shot it. And one more thing. I was commenting. I said, KC needs to go inside. Casey's a big fella, 6'7", wide body, needs to play inside. You go out and hit three three-pointers. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I I like playing with my back to the basket some, but, you know, coach says uh, shoot it when we're out there, so I did. And T.J. Hollowell came in, spark for the team. Didn't show up so much in the stat sheets, but you came in and hit some big shots. Excuse me, Ryan, let me reach over here a little bit. You know, I just felt my shot tonight. I just felt like shooting, and it was, I was open, and I was hitting, so I just kept shooting, and, uh, just wanted to be positive and pick up the team. Again, the Don's having a rough, a little bit of a rough season, but you guys are doing very well, playing very hard. Keep up the good work. Good luck the rest of the way, guys. Now back to you, Dave. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Channel 6 volunteer crew and the Learning Resource Center at IPFW for their contributions to the live production of our basketball games this evening. The telecast of this IPFW sports event is copyrighted and the sole possession of the College Cable Access Center at IPFW. Unauthorized duplication, exhibition, retransmission, rebroadcast, or other use of this event without express written consent is strictly prohibited. Don't forget to tune in to Channel 6 next Saturday evening at 7.30 to see exciting MIVA volleyball action as the Buckeyes from Ohio State University take on IPFW. For Charlie Washington, this is Dave Skelton. Goodbye for now.